We're down to our last four undefeated teams in basketball. Over east, we got the Celtics and the Cavs. Then out west, we got the Lakers and the Thunder. And I will talk about all four of these teams today, but I'm going to start off with the team that stands out the most. That is the Los Angeles Lakers, man. If you would have asked me before the season started, what are the chances that the Lakers start off 3-0? I would have gave you 5%. 10% maybe? And the main reason for that was the level of competition that they beat on the road to 3-0. Like, no, not disrespecting the other three teams that are 3-0, none of those teams played a competition of this stiff to start the season. First day of the year, we get um, the Minnesota Timberwolves, we get that win. Second game of the year, you get the Suns. And then on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, you get the Kings, and that is a win as well. The Timberwolves are projected to be a 51 team. The Suns' projections were 47 and, or 48 and a half, and then the Kings were 47 and a half. In theory, all three of these teams are playoff teams this year now so early in the year we don't know what teams are really good or really bad again these are based off the projections but that is a rough start to the season and they have walked through it and while all of these wins are impressive the one that is most impressive to me is of course the Kings the second night of a back-to-back -back after being down by 20 something points against the Suns and fighting your way back to get that win the second night of a back-to-back -back is easily a game that you could lose it is a scheduled loss if you will going against the Kings who hadn't played in a few nights and they really won it they, they lost their previous game to like I don't know them collapsing and then Anthony Edwards taking over and I'm sorry Kings fans because that's exactly what happened again in this Lakers game <laughs> where they collapsed and somebody took over and that somebody was Braun. They said LeBron became the first player in history. Let me get to fourth quarter stats. Became the first player in history with this stat line in the fourth quarter. 16, 6, and 5, perfect from the field. And he gave us an all-time clip of him talking to Rui Hachimura, telling him to swing the ball. I got 10, 10 points in a row. But this Lakers team has a whole different, I don't know, feeling to them. And it is a huge testament. I, I think a lot of times throughout history, we question how important coaching is because, hey, you got one of the two greatest players of all time on your team. You got another top 10 player on your team. How much does coaching matter? And through the first three games, it's night and day between Darvin Ham and, and JJ Reddick. And listen, this is not a pal on Darvin Ham uh, type of channel, but like it is interesting because going into the season, I guess two years in a row now, where you do like the top 100 players in the league and Braun and Anthony Davis are both top 10. And then the questions become, how can you have two top 10 players on your roster and be a playing team every single season? The, the answer might have been, they just weren't put in the position to be great anymore. I, I don't understand it. It's just the way it is. JJ Redick is running some really cool stuff. And as a basketball sicko and a basketball nerd and a dude that wants to be on, be on the coaching uh, a coaching bench in two, three years down the line, I'm watching the Lakers and being like, damn, JJ got them going. And I was, of course, rooting for JJ as one of the, one of the homies. Can I say that? One of the homies. But again, Never did I think they would start this season this good. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. A lot of times coaches come into a situation and they talk about changing the identity. This is what I want to do. That's what I want to do. And a lot of times it falls through because it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, right? This Lakers team has the oldest dog in the goddamn league on the team, but somehow J.J. Redick has been able to implement most of the things that he wanted to implement. The first one being Anthony Davis being the number one option. Teams, coaches have said this. We have Anthony Davis. LeBron is 37 years old at that point. We want Anthony Davis to be the 1A, and it ended up not working. They either it been Anthony Davis not accepting it or them not putting him in the position to be the 1A. This season, even though, again, this fourth quarter was amazing from Braun, this season, Anthony Davis is the best player on the Lakers. There's no real conversation, but you still get old man being able to take over a quarter if you need him. He said that he wanted to play LeBron James off the ball more, and a lot of people was like, whoa, 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 whoa. LeBron is one of the smartest players, best ball handlers, best creators in the history of basketball. What do you mean you want to play him off the ball more? But he said, not like he's going to be sitting in the corner, but he's going to be involved in actions where he is not the ball handler every single time, and that is work to perfection. LeBron James has always been a guy to be able to dominate a game based on this and him being a physical freak now he's got a bunch of different options where he's the short roll and he can decide oh do i want to lay this ball up or do i want to kick it to the corner or kick it to the wing for a three it's been beautiful basketball another thing is empowering austin reeves to be in a position to play his game and so so far reeves has been <laughs> phenomenal Rui has been phenomenal the one thing that he has not lived up at least is his what he want through the first three games is that he said he wanted to shoot a bunch of three-pointers and as of right now they're 27th in rate they're shooting a great efficiency on it. They're really dominating the paint. And of course, that is Anthony Davis being as dominant as he is. Now, 
I don't want this to be a jinx video, right? Because all four of these teams that we're talking about today has competition either today or tomorrow against really, really good teams. But again, I just wanted to highlight these undefeated teams and shout out to the Lakers. Um, going into the season on small ball with Kenny Beecham, I said they were one of the toughest teams to project where they could be. And I chickened out. But I, I put them as a seven seed, if I'm not mistaken, where J.J. Redick has these teams, this, these boys hooping to be like, hey, we're probably going to be a top six seed um, for the first time in a minute. And that's interesting. Also, last thing on the Lakers before we move on to the next team, um, being able to get the most out of random role players, again, three games of the season has been pretty cool, where Dalton Connect, who was the guy J.J. Redick wanted in the war room, uh, J.J. Redick was drawing up plays for Dalton Connect the moment they decided they were going to go out there and get him. He's really put in a position to be the best version of himself as a true rookie. 37 year old rookie but regardless a true rookie and then like through the first couple of games Jackson Hayes looks like a real basketball player and that wasn't necessarily the case through the first couple of years of his career so again put the players in the right position to be successful the team will be successful shout out to JJ Reddy team number two is the OKC Thunder they beat the Nuggets on their first game of the season where they held the Nuggets to under 90 points and and today is a huge day I'm going to get to the Nuggets, especially if they end up losing. Oh, my God. I got I got so many words for them. Um, but they beat the Nuggets. They dominate against the Bulls. And then they beat the Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks are the only team of the three to put up 100 or more points. And the game, I just watched this game this morning because I missed it last night. Um, even though the final score was 128 to 104, this game was really, really close for the majority of it. So shout out to the Atlanta Hawks, who also started off the season pretty well. But... For the most part, the defense has been disgusting. And as of today, there's no question that the best defender in basketball has been Chad Holmgren. I think a lot of us projected that the Thunder will be the number one team in the Western Conference. And that, at least for me, that was if everything stayed the same. That Shea Gilgis Alexander was still an MVP candidate. That J Dub was still a uh, 17 to 20 point per game score. That Chet would still be, you know what I'm saying? And they have exceeded expectations mostly because Chet has hit this whole another level and one of the most disappointing things i guess in the grand scheme of chet holmgren as a player is that he missed that first year of a season so in a lot of people's mind he's in the draft class of victor Wembanyama, and vic of course is the alien and so on and so forth but he took so much of the attention and the flowers away from chet who also had a phenomenal rookie season that if chet was in almost any other draft class over the last 10 years he would have won the rookie of the year but he went against wimby and now going into this season it's like wimby wimby dpoy he said the world shout out to rudy gobert that's the last one you'll ever win because this is my award to lose and so far, it's been head and shoulders Chet Holmgren, where the first game of the season, they go against Nicole Jokins, and though it was by committee, he was as dominant as ever. He was uh, bigger, he was faster than Jokic, and so many times, he just got up court, got up court, ended up getting the bucket just by him running the floor. Second game of the season, he went against the Bulls. The Bulls suck. Um, but the third game of the year, they went against the Atlanta Hawks, and again, just as dominant. The final stat line is 25, 9, 4, and 6 blocks. <laughs> that's like that's video game numbers bro from the the center who can create his own three or create his own basket and i'm the only dude on the internet that would look at on off numbers this early in the season but i'm so very curious because the eye test tells me the minutes when him and alex caruso on the court nobody can score but i wonder if the numbers say that through the first three games <laughs> oh my Goodness. Hold on, y'all. Their defensive rating with Alice Caruso and, and Chad Holmgren on the courts, again, 30 minutes, not even 30 minutes. They have a defensive rating of 73.2. Do, do we understand? Now, this this is like, these, these are garbage time minutes, by the way. Um, do you understand? Again, 30 minutes. So let's let's chill. Let's chill. Let's chill. Let's chill. But that just shows, like, having two all-defensive caliber defenders... And also, I ain't even mentioned Lou Dort or J-Dub. Every one of these guys have completely bought into the defense, and that's allowing them to get out, get more easy buckets. And similar to the Lakers, which I didn't even mention, they're winning the possession game. And I'm going to take a, a page out of um, Chris Vernon's book. Um, Chris Vernon used to have this old thing. I don't know if he said it in a while because I haven't been able to listen to their show much. Um, he used to say this thing. Um, don't play players who suck. The Thunder do not play players that are bad at basketball anymore. Um, and every one of them fit like a glove. Where, of course, they're starting to line up. And they're, they've been messing around with the lineup. Sometimes it has been Kasev. Sometimes it has been Isaiah. Sometimes it has been Wiggins. I think all three of them at least started one game. Um, but also, when you have Alex Caruso off the bench, even Uzman Zhang has been able to find himself, at least in the first game of the season, he had a couple threes in that corner. I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. And again, these guys played garbage time minutes. But their full rotation, even the rookie um, in A.J. Mitchell, these are good basketball players. And it takes a special team to say our players 1 through 10 are all good. 
Usually players nine and players 10, you like, you just give them a few minutes just to pass by and just pray that they don't blow a lead. No, no, no. Everybody, every roster or lineup con construction that Mark Dayton all has been able to put together the first three games cannot just maintain a league, but, but build on the lead. And that is a special, special team. And I ain't even mentioned that they don't even have a center. They have one center on the roster. It's one center and it's Chet. Like, there's there's no Jay Will. There's been no, of course, Isaiah Hardenstein. So imagine once they get that on the back end as well. Next team's the Boston Celtics. So far, they beat the Knicks on opening night where they were one three away from setting an NBA record for most threes. Then they went to the Wizards and that game was kind of close until it wasn't. And then they just beat the Pistons a couple nights ago. And shout out to the Pistons for hanging into that game. I think I'm going to make a video about the Pistons somewhere soon, especially if they can continue to lose. But these games are scary because... The Pistons threw out their 27, 28 game losing streak, had nine games or no, no, it was 11 games where they lost by single digit points. This felt like one of those games. I'm sorry. I just, yeah. Um, anyway, the Boston Celtics have been phenomenal. This is the least surprising thing of all time, considering again, they went against the Wizards and the Pistons. But even without that, this is the best team in basketball. And Jason Tatum's numbers. Let me, let me read you Jason Tatum's numbers. Taco J. I haven't heard somebody call him that since he was like a rookie. Um, 33, six and six. 54, 48, 66, Jason. Hold on, that ain't what we wanted. A PER of 38.2. And I want to remind you, if you have not been locked into Boston Celtics basketball, Jason Tatum did not play in the fourth quarter of the first game or the second game. So he's averaging 33 points per game through three games with missing two full quarters. It's insane level of basketball right now. While their defense hasn't been as dominant so far this season as the previous year, the offense is still the best in basketball. And a lot of that has to do with like, I guess the mindset slash shift for Jason Tatum, where there were so many videos over the off season slash in the playoffs of how his jump shot looked different than previous years. Now that hitch is completely, completely gone. And that's how he's shooting again right now, 48%. That's not gonna last, but 48% from three. Just completely an unfair basketball team through three games. Tatum, 48%. These are three-point percentage. Brown, 45%. Derek White, 43%. Peyton Pritchard, 42%. Drew Holiday, 60%. Sam Hauser, who's supposed to be the best shooter on the team, is shooting sub-30%. Don't play him no more. I only play one game. Um, Al Horford, shooting 57% uh, from three. And even uh, Xavier Tillman, attempting almost three threes per game, above league average. This team has been a bully and it's kind of cool. I wish they allowed Luke Cornett to shoot threes again. I mean, he was used to be a three-point shooter. Now he just gets offensive rebounds and that's set, sets set great ghost screens. That's what he does. Um, but again, I don't have much to say outside of they're a great basketball team and they're probably gonna continue to be that. And then lastly, we got the Cleveland Cavaliers who have beat the Raptors, the Pistons, and the Wizards. Now, this is definitely a cupcake start to the season, but it's not necessarily about who they beat, it's how they beat them that I, that that's impressive to me. Again, we mentioned with JJ Reddick, coaches come in with this philosophy that they wanna implement, and sometimes it's hard to do, um, so far, Kenny Atkinson has been a man of his word as well, because Evan Mobley, who was one of the focal points of Kenny Atkinson's press conference and how excited he, excited he was for Evan Mobley as a player, has been more than what even I expected as a guy who's been an Evan Mobley collector since his... This is just the stuff that's in the room. The basement got more, the Evan Mobley collector for the all of his NBA career. And there are times where, and I think this is like the... The best example of Evan Mobley being used more of, of a player um, when a, a shot was made by the opposing team. And of course, usually you inbound it to a DG, to a Don Vimichu. Sometimes it has been going through Evan Mobley to start the action. And that's just super cool stuff. And sometimes he did this a good amount last season as well, but I think he's doing it more this year. Well, he'll grab a board and he will go. We trust you as a playmaker. We trust you as a play finisher. Just, just get it and go. And he's been able to do that. They got the Knicks tonight, which should be a good game. Um, but for the most part, they're taking care of business. And I read an article this morning where Donovan Mitchell was telling his teammates, like, yeah, we are 3-0, and but let's not get complacent. Remember, we went against three, he didn't say this himself, but we went against um, three not-so-great teams, and the schedule is about to pick up. So let's completely lock in, because next they got the Knicks, they got the Lakers, they got the Magic, they got the Bucks, they got the Bucks again, they got the Pelicans, they got the Warriors. That's seven good teams, depending on what Steph Curry ankle turns out to be. So seven good teams coming up on the schedule. So... It's not necessarily about who they've beat. It's about how they're winning these games. And I think the best thing about it all is that the defense through the first three games is still elite. Like sometimes you sacrifice a part of that in order to get your offense better. JB Bickerstaff is widely renowned as a defensive minded coach. Kenny Atkinson is more neutral slash more offensive minded. So and, and in my mind, going into the season, you sacrifice some of the defensive statistics in order to get the offense better. Where through the first three games, 
the defense is just as good as better than last year, but basically as good as it was two years ago when they were one of the top five defenses in basketball. And sneakily, sneakily, Ty Jerome. I'm just going to say the first game of the season, all of his points came in garbage time. They don't count. Ty Jerome has been so damn good as a backup. If you're a Cavs fan, you probably recognize this. If you're not watching the Cavs, watch Ty Jerome tonight versus the Knicks and Maybe he'll have a stinker. I don't know. But Ty Jerome has been really, really good as a backup. And I think he's a real player in this league now. Now, all of these teams play tonight. So uh, I I pray. Oh, no. OKC doesn't play. They just they just had a back-to-back. -back. I pray that this wasn't a jinxer because the Bucs got the Celtics tonight. And the Bucs don't look good. I might have 100 balls for them. I, like, if they lose tonight. Um, so the, the Celtics go against the Bucs. The Cavs go against the Knicks, as we mentioned, and then the Lakers got the Suns. All three of these teams have really good competition coming up tonight, so maybe they won't last to be undefeated after today. And then OKC got the Spurs next. Hell, OKC might be the last undefeated team standing, but who really knows? Who really knows? If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, subscribe.